Hey pros, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So we have another client today who's experiencing a lot of breakage and decided that today was the day that she just wanted to go ahead and start the process. So we are going to be doing a micro pixie haircut on her. Um, I just wanted you guys to kind of really see exactly how much breakage she has and it was at least about 75% of her head. So to start the process, I went ahead and used the clippers to cut down a lot of that um, hair that's already breaking off, which is majority of it, the relaxed hair. Um, I'm not even going to say majority. Actually, all of the relaxed hair is what really broke off. Um, it's not. I'm not going to say that it's from relaxer. It could be from a number of things. Stress, um, mismanagement. Like There's so many different things in regards to that. Now, we did have to relax her new grow hair, but we did also normalize her three times, which is also very important when it comes on to the relaxer process. So at this point of the process, I'm just basically going through and blending her hair with the hair that we have stretched out by relaxing it. That was basically all of her natural hair and cutting down any residual hair um, that was left behind from the preliminary haircut. Now with a micro pixie, especially in her case, it's going to be super short, but that does not stop her from having an actual style. And I tell people this as I do in almost every video. When it comes on to doing haircuts, you guys, there is really no straightforward cut. Every client has a different situation. Every client has a different reason as to why they got to this point. My job is to really just basically tell them how to now manage their hair, get them to a place where they are in a happy state and they can appreciate the hair that they do have and also start better caring for that hair with, of course, knowledge and really good product. So with her, the haircut was, was it wasn't so complicated. Um, the dynamic of hair cutting is kind of always the same, but at the same time, you have to know when to not cut as much and when to cut more. Um, in her case, like in the front of her head, I just decided to utilize some of the length that she did have going towards the front just to kind of give her a little more style. And then later on down the road, as her hair starts to grow out, we'll begin to trim away that bridge of hair that's in the front. Um, we're just kind of using it to her advantage right now, only because we know that she has a lot of breakage in the crown area. And I want it to create a little bit of accent going on in front of her face. So that is also another thing that as a stylist, you have to know when to do and when not to do. My clients usually come in and they say, just do what you think I need. And we consult. I still consult with my clients no matter what. And then from there, I can kind of determine how much I'm cutting and where I'm going with the style. Normally, I don't really determine the style until after I relax my client's hair because I need to see really how much length my client truly has. Remember, if we have, we're basing it on hair and shrinkage, I really don't know the kind of length that my client really will be having. So sometimes it looks worse than it is, especially when the hair is not relaxed or laying straight. And then that's the reason why I always wait until we get to this point for me to really know what I can and cannot salvage. Now, after her cut is really when we just decide to do the mold. The mold includes, of course, our elite silk wrap foam. And then um, if the client is getting any form of color or anything like that, we would have done that process before this. Okay, so for the molding process, I, I've kind of been saying this a lot in my other videos. I use um, gel just to kind of do the base area, which is right at the nape. You don't have to use the gel, you guys. It's really by choice. It doesn't hurt the hair. It just allows the hair to lay a little bit better. And then I go over that with our Elite Silk Wrap Foam. Now, the Elite Silk Wrap Foam is nice and lightweight. It holds the hair really, really well. And I don't have to work super hard to lay my client's hair down. So that's another reason why your mold is super important. If your mold is not done right and now you're going into styling, if this hair is nice and crispy and crunchy or it's like not smooth, then your hairstyle at the end is not going to be smooth and you're going to spend a ton of time trying to straighten the hair out. So for those who always ask, oh, do you have to always relax the client's hair? When you're dealing with clients where they have a situation of breakage or shedding or they've lost a ton of hair and you're trying to cover different areas, yes, relaxer is definitely recommended. In some points, it might even be required. So if you don't really understand, it's better to just ask rather than just comment with ignorance because I see a lot of ignorance rather than good information.
Anyhow, now I'm just basically, after her hair is now fully dried, I'm just using our um, edgers to edge her hairline and create a nice um, clean cut for her. And then I'm using my Babyliss um, Gold FX Clippers to remove some of the density down in the nape area. Majority of the time, my clients want this area faded out because it is the most complicated to keep once the hair starts to grow out. And you don't want that hair flipping up in the back of your neck. It's just not cute. And really and truly, we don't even focus in this area. So you do want a nice faded look back there. But some clients like to have a little more length, which is really by choice. This is not a requirement. Okay, so now I am applying a little bit of the Frizz Tamer and Shine Serum to her hair. This is number one, going to serve as a heat protectant. Number two, it's going to loosen up that firmness from the mold itself. And it's also going to add that nice sheen to the hair for when we are actually curling. Now, the Frizz Tamer and Shine Serum actually works great when it's heat activated, meaning when you apply heat to it is when that glossification actually happens or it starts to come out. Now I am going through and just carving out her sideburns really quickly. I usually like to wait until the end for this, but if I see an opportunity in the midst of me doing my client's hair, then I'll go ahead and clean that up at that point. And then if I need to do it again, I'll do it at the end. Now she doesn't have a whole heap of hair to curl you guys, but I did still use our three tenths of an inch flat iron just to kind of go through and give her a little bit of oomph towards this style. Um, some stylists would have just left it flat I don't like flat hair. So let me just say it that way. I don't like flat hair. <laughs> so all I did was just kind of go through and just give her a light bump. I did have enough hair to kind of put between my fingers, which was great. And that's also another reason why I left a little more hair going towards her face so that she'd have a little more accent and a little more um, oomph in her style. If you guys notice, for her mold, I did do a little bit of swiggles or swerves in the front of her face. That also adds emphasis to the front, a little more accent to the front. It gives a little more style to the actual hair. And even though this is a micro pixie, it is going to still just make it look a little more clean and polished on her finish. Okay. Now for the areas where her hair was super short, I did not go through and try to curl that. Now I could have used Marcel's and curled my life away. But at the same time, is my is my client going to be able to do that? No. So instead of me frustrating my client even more, I decided to just kind of give it a slight bump in areas that could be bumped. And then I went through and just used the comb or the rake portion of the comb just to kind of give it a little bit of movement or texture in those other areas. That is really how it works, you guys. You can improvise. You don't necessarily have to catch every strand of hair. The new styles now don't really require a lot of um, definition in the curls. But definitely, if the client wanted that definition, we could give it to her by just using um, smaller Marcel irons. I have Marcel irons. I have a drawer full of them. Do I use them as much? No, but I keep them. I just feel like I never can throw them away because there will always be that one client where I don't have a choice and I have to go and use my Marcel's. So I always keep them. It's, it's kind of like the outfit that you won't throw away because you think that you're going to be able to fit it again later on down the road. That's how Marcel irons are. And it is a love-hate relationship. They make the salon extremely hot, right? And they also have to be tempered. You know, it's just a lot. I was so glad when they came out with the micro flat irons because I did not have to take out my Marcel's ever again. So we're actually done with the curling portion, you guys. Now I'm just kind of cleaning her up and getting her ready to exit the salon. Um, at this point of the process, how she take care of this, she definitely gets some Elite Silk Wrap Foam, definitely gets some hair repair and restore shampoo and conditioner. Her next appointment would be a protein treatment, but if she is not coming in for her next appointment, then she would be using the Elite Repair RX at home to do her protein treatment. Just because she's short, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have to take care of the hair. Now is when she really wants to start taking care of it because she has a brand new place to start over. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment down below. Tell us what you thought about the finished product. And also comment down below if you've ever had to come kind of start over with the process of getting your hair back in order and you decided that you wanted to do a shortcut. I'll see everybody in the next video. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.